I think sequestration would be a nightmare for our national security. And I hope very much that if indeed it kicks in, that it will be quickly superseded by subsequent action in 2012 so that we don't start to see the kinds of cuts that would otherwise be necessary. There's some talk out there, uh, including by, by one of the uh, Republican presidential candidates, that the kinds of things that are now already happening are not real cuts. That's wrong. Real cuts are already happening to defense as a consequence of the August deal and the first tranche of reductions that was mandated by the August provisions of this debt deal. That was going to result in the, about $400 billion in 10-year savings, or according to the CBO baseline, which is sort of the steady state, if you just stay with inflation, $350 billion in reductions over 10 years. So in other words, we're $350 billion below uh, what would be needed just to keep up with inflation already before sequestration. Then you add on the cuts from sequestration, roughly another half trillion dollars over 10 years for the military, and you wind up with a, a, an annualized budget that is about 20% less than what it is today. But it's actually even more of a reduction because I'm, I haven't included war costs in any of this discussion. The war costs are assumed to come down anyway. They are therefore not costs or not savings that the Pentagon <coughs> can claim to justify or satisfy its requirements for deficit targets, and that's appropriate. We should be making our decisions on war and peace based on the merits of the case. So the Pentagon should not be claiming credit, but that's another $100 billion that's going to result each year uh, by the time we are phasing our way out of Afghanistan by 2014. So in other words, you're going to see uh, total defense spending go from somewhere in the range of $700 billion a year to somewhere in the range of $500 billion a year. Now, I think most of that is okay. The war costs can and should come down, not right away. I was just in Afghanistan last week, and I think we're going to need a couple more years of fairly sustained effort. The president has us headed down to 68,000 U.S. troops at the end of next summer from our current level closer to 100,000. I think that's okay, but I think we'll have to stay at 68,000 for the following year to do the job right, and then we can accelerate the cuts a little further. Uh, and so by 2014, we're down to a modest presence. I think that's doable. Uh, and the good news is we are going to see, therefore, additional reductions in war spending each year. And by 2015, hopefully, uh, we're down to a very modest level. So we will have saved over $100 billion in the annual war budget by that point, maybe even $150 billion relative to what the peak had been last year. That's all as it should be. On top of that, I think the base defense budget, the core, the peacetime military establishment, can get smaller and get smarter and more efficient. But let's bear in mind the constraints under which this has to happen. Uh, President Obama, Secretary Clinton, and Secretary Panetta have all been in East Asia recently, all been underscoring at each and every turn that we are there to stay, in fact, that we're there to stay even more than people appreciated before their trips, that we're not going to cut our military presence, that we're aware that North Korea is still a very severe threat, and that China, while a promising rising power, is nonetheless a rising power. Rising powers are dangerous whether they want to be or not. It's almost in their DNA. I don't want to do a Bob Kagan imitation too much up here, but Bob would make this point very eloquently. In history, any time a country rises the way China has, it is tempted to use its new resources and capabilities and push others around and assert itself. I don't anticipate or, uh, or favor a conflict with China, but it's very important that we stay robustly engaged in the region with our allies in order to sort of constrain China's growth in a constructive direction. I think the strategy is working. We'd be foolish to pull back now uh, just because our deficit problems have led us to feel that we can't sustain this. So we have to find a way to be still active in Asia, but do it more economically and in a more brutally efficient way.